All right, welcome in everybody. Daniel is off tonight. I'm still stranded on the island playing Survivor. No, I'm just still in Mississippi, but Aiden just told me the background looks good, so that's all that really matters. That being said, Aiden May, how you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. You know what? I, I just appreciate the opportunity to come podcast like this. And you know what? I got nothing else going on tonight, so this is a perfect way to spend it. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been watching baseball night. Y'all are obviously one of the few teams that has the night off. Um, a lot of action going on, man. It is just that time of year. But before we get into your story, before we talk all things baseball, man, let's break the ice. I was reading the bio on you, and I've seen uh, a couple things. I want to start with chess, man. Um, I play my son in chess, and I was not aware of a rule. And I got to tell you, Aiden, I may not like chess anymore. I had six pieces left. He had one. I had yes, him sir. cornered. But then he played me into a stalemate, which I didn't know was a rule. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm pissed off that I tied with my 11-year-old son when I had six pieces to his one, man. What's up with that? You know, stalemates are a tough one. That, that's a rough one. You know, when, you, when you're when you playing good and you're just dominating somebody and you just end up in a, in a spot like that. I mean, it's rough. Um, you know, it kind of. Kind of, it's like, it's like a gut punch, and it's you know it, it's kind of like baseball though. You know, sometimes you're you're in the ninth and you're leading by you know four or five, and then all of a sudden you're down. So it's kind of one of those things that like you just got to make sure you go till the end and you finish till the end. So I, I think it kind of keeps me mentally locked in for the whole game. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm playing eleven year old. He just starts giggling at me. I'm like, what's so funny? <laughs> it's like we tie, and I'm like, no, we didn't. And you're like, you lost, bro. Anyway, he starts explaining to me, and I'm like, man, I ain't never heard of that rule in my life. And so I look it up, Google it, and sure enough, there's a rule. And I'm like, you know yeah. what? I'm never playing chess with you again, turd. You know, that's how I am with my brother. I I've never beat him ever once. So, <laughs> you know what? I, I guess I'm, uh, me and you will, will stay clear of uh, uh, certain games, I, I suppose. But I did see you play poker, and um, I'm curious, man. When I was in the military, I always used to play with my boys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, do y'all have some good card games with the baseball guys? Yeah, you know, there, there's a bunch of games that get ran here. Um, I haven't been playing, really. Um, I've kind of taken some time off of poker, but I used to grind it, like, almost every single day. Um, but, you know, the guys are really good. It's like being able to to be competitive without, like, you know, hurting each other, which is good. Um, and so, you know, every, everyone's really good about it. You know, we get some games going on the road, too, which is fun. So it's, Well, yeah, and, uh, and that's why I, you know, correlated the two between military and athletics, because you're with your boys. It's a good way to pass time. It's camaraderie, you know, just chilling, talking. So, yeah, as long as you're not, like, getting crazy betting stuff that you don't have and you're just, you know, kind of playing fun, maybe throwing $20 out there or something, you know, it's all in good fun. So, yeah, yes, I like a good poker game with the boys. Oh yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with it. I mean, it's one of it's one of life's great pleasures is just sitting sitting at the table with your boys and just playing some cards. Absolutely. So let's talk about music for a second, man. I like to ask every guest okay. if you can go see any musician anywhere, who are you going to see? Where are you going to see them? You know, I've actually never been to a concert in my whole life. Um, it's Ooh. definitely one that I want to knock off. I mean, probably number one on that list is Cody Johnson. I mean, I really want to go see Cody Johnson. I've, I've heard he's a great performer. He does some good stuff. Um, you know, Morgan Wallen, same kind of thing. I've heard he's really good. But, you know, honestly, there's nothing specific. But I'd say probably number one on there is Cody Johnson. Is it one of those things, man, you've just been so busy along the way that you just never really got a chance? I mean, how do you not been to a concert? Nobody good comes to Albuquerque. I mean, I feel like it's like, you know, you, you, if you want to go to a concert, you want to see somebody good. And I guess we just haven't had anybody like really noteworthy roll through there. So I guess that's probably why. And then also being busy. So probably a combination of those things. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I get it. Let's talk about athletics, man. If you could go see any athlete or maybe it's a team specific thing, go see them anywhere. Who are you going to see? Where are you going to see them? Is this all time or is this current? Well, uh, let's, let's get wild, man. Let's go all time. All time, I mean, you got to go Michael Jordan. Like, if I could see Michael Jordan play, like, you know, that's – I feel like that's just, you know, there's no other athlete quite like him. Um, you know, besides that, I guess, like, prime Adam Wainwright, want to go see him pitch. Like, I grew up a Cardinals fan. I grew up watching him. And, like, you know, obviously, it was towards the back end of his career, so I never really saw, like, true Adam Wainwright. So, if I could see, like, prime him, that would be that would be fantastic. What if I told you, because I'm old and I'm a Cardinals fan, I've seen prime Adam Wainwright and I've seen Jordan in person, man. It's uh, I've, I've been blessed. I mean, I was I was young when it was Jordan. I was like 10 years old, but nonetheless, 
Uh, I've gotten to see them both. So I like both your answers. This this podcast, before we start talking to college athletes, was predicated on um, during COVID. We were talking the last dance. We all um, feel the same way about Jordan. So when you come out with that answer, um, we feel the same way. He He's the GOAT to us. And, um, man, he just embodies what you want from somebody just – laying it all out on the line so if if he's your guy it tells me a lot about you know what you're bringing to the table and your mentality as an athlete yes sir well i mean i, I would, for you to be able to see both of them i guess i'd say i'm pretty jealous so you know that's that's pretty cool though so but yeah no, jordan's jordan's just awesome i'll put it to you this way when you grow up loving jordan and then you know i get um floor seats down to the grizzlies um, connected very well in Memphis and uh, where I live. And I've seen LeBron and, you know, a lot of, we have a lot of guests coming here and talk about what LeBron means to them as he should. I mean, not just because of how good he is, but the age of the guests that come on. But for me, it just doesn't move the needle because he just, I don't know, man, he's never been what, what Jordan was for me. And, you know, last night I thought there was a good answer, you know, guests talking about Derek Jeter. And I felt the same way about Derek Jeter. He He's somebody who really moved the needle for me, man. The way he stood out as the captain. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I have this conversation probably once a week with one of my teammates of LeBron and Jordan, and I'm I'm a Jordan guy all the way. I mean, you know, LeBron's probably my number two. I'll I'll give credit where it's due, but I think that the gap between them is just, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a pretty pretty damn big gap. So, um, but like I said, I mean, I have this discussion, this argument with one of my teammates probably once a week. So it's probably the most common sports argument. A lot of the other sports, you know, there's really no debate. And you know, look at look at NFL right now because of the championships Tom Brady put up, you know, nobody really wants to argue. You might have some old heads who may say Joe Montana, you know, and the same thing with other sports, but man, really that's the one sport where people, you know, because it's a generational thing, but you know, we could do that all day. Let's get into your story, man. You know, you're just talking about where you're from. Um, you know, are you from actual Albuquerque or are you from like a small town outside of that? Where are you from? I'm from literally the middle of nowhere. So there's a, there's a small little village called Tijeras, which is like, you know, 20, 30 minutes outside of Albuquerque. And then I live probably another 20 minutes deep into the mountains. So I'm like from the middle of nowhere, there's no stores or anything out there. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty deep into the, the middle of nowhere, but I spent like, you know, all my life growing up in the city in Albuquerque and everything. So I just tell people I'm from Albuquerque because, you know, I spend most of my time training there. I spend most of my time, you know, hanging out with friends there and everything. So that's, that's yeah. pretty much where I'm from. I mean, I've been through there four times in total, um, different perspective every time. The first time it caught me off guard. Um, we went to stay there, you know, for the night passing through, went to go to bed that night. Um, the temperature wasn't that bad. Woke up the next morning, hell had froze over and it was like, where were we at? Type oh, yeah. And then um, I had a time where me and my family were driving through to go to the Grand Canyon and uh, we stopped in, uh, I guess it was like an old town type thing. And it was beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. They had like a... Um, they had a celebration going on, like a parade and everything. It was it was real cool, man. A kind of authentic culture there. Uh, so it uh, it was a nice pick me up from the you know the previous time I had been there. Yeah, you know it's Albuquerque is one of those places. I, I like to joke that the weather is kind of bipolar. Like you know it'll be pouring down rain, and then you know fifteen minutes later it's a hundred degrees out. Um, <laughs> And so, like, you know, it's 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 kind of crazy in the winter. Like at my house, it'll get down into the negatives. So I mean, it gets cold. Um, you know, and it's, 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 it's a cool little place. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, one of the, one of the most gorgeous, like sunsets you'll ever see. And then, um, you know, culturally, like you touched on, it's, it's great. I mean, then that kind of blends into the food. Like I've never had food like I had in, in New Mexico. Yeah, no, we had, we had great food that night. Like I said, I had the old town field and then they had, uh, through that parade, they had like a car show, man. And I'm actually a guy who loves cars. So a bunch yeah. of old classic cars. So, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a good scene, man, on the pass through. So, I guess, you know, based upon what you're saying, whether it's, you know, weather or anything else between us, it's, it's about catching it in the right time, which you could say that through a lot of areas. But I guess especially when you're talking about the desert. Of course. Yeah, no, it's 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 got its perks, but it's definitely, you know, got its downsides too. Um, you know, like every state, I suppose. But, uh, you know, New Mexico, yeah, don't worry. I'm from Mississippi. Well, I'm from Memphis, but I live in Mississippi. There's a lot of downsides. So, you know, it, you know, it is what it is. But yes, let's sir. talk about the family, man. Like, um, you know, you got mom, dad, brothers, sisters. What are we looking at? So I've got my I've got my mom and my dad obviously, and then I've got an older brother and I've got an older sister, um, and so I'm I'm the youngest. I'm the baby of the family. My my dad he's kind of who introduced me to baseball. Um, his side of the family is very big into baseball, and they they have been. Um, he's you know he's the guy that, that that supports me like nobody nobody else, and you know he's awesome. I mean he just you know he tries to go to all my games as much as possible, and 
you know, he, he kind of tries to reel me back when I get too upset with myself or, or whatever else happens. So he's, he's great. My mom, super supportive. Um, <clears throat> she gets too nervous watching me play. So she doesn't, she doesn't get to make it out to a, ton, a whole lot of games, which is, you know, it is what it is. I've, but, uh, you know, I, I, I love her. And then my brother, he, he's super busy. Um, he does, you know, he's, he just finished up his, his degree. He's going to take a gap year work and then go back for his master's, but he's, He's super busy. He's the he's the president of UNM, um, University of New Mexico. So, I mean, he's got his hands full. He's talked as much as I wish I'd like. Um, and then same with my sister. She's a nurse in San Diego, and so she's super busy. So, um, you know, I, I love my family. They're they're super supportive, and 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 they love me. But you know, I guess I I don't get to talk to them as much as I wish I could sometimes. Well, I imagine so. But you know, growing up, you know, having two older siblings. Um, was it one of them things where, you know, they helped mold you to be, you know, a better person, whether it was maybe athletically or academically? Because, you know, we're going to get into it in a minute, but, you know, you've been sharp in both. So I feel like, you know, was it all credit to dad or can you throw some credit to the older siblings as well? Um, you know, definitely a lot to my brother. Um, he was he he was very, very talented baseball player. Unfortunately, he didn't have the love for the game. So he ended up uh, not pursuing that. He He, he quit um you know before he could really take it off but he threw 88 in eighth grade which is you know just a an unbelievable talent and so I was kind of I guess I would say I was always chasing um to do what my older brother was doing um you know I'd always play long toss with him I'd always like try to out throw him I used to be a catcher so I'd catch his bullpens and everything and just you know try to I guess catch up to him but being two and a half years younger than him it, it really wasn't feasible um, but you know, I, I would we definitely have some, we have some something. athletes that play up just to play with their sibling, and it's actually what made them better because they played at a skill level that was just above them. And ultimately, while they may have not done the best in real time, it made them better for the long term. Yeah, no, I mean that's definitely probably what happened. I played up with him like all throughout little league and like even some some club ball times. And you know, there's definitely some times where I was I was overmatched, but I feel like it definitely gave me some more confidence, especially like when I'd go back down to my level. And it's like, oh, you know, I was I was just playing two and a half years up. And then it's like, this is this is a cakewalk. And I feel like, you know, something that, that can't be overstated enough is just confidence. Like if you've got the confidence to play, then like you're probably going to be a pretty, pretty damn good athlete. So um, I feel like that definitely helped my confidence and um, just gave me like, you know, I guess my sights were 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 high from an early age. And so it kind of helps me, uh, I guess, shoot high and, um, you know, just keep keep working hard and keep moving towards a goal. Yeah, no doubt. So, you know, with your father playing college ball, um, you know, growing up at an early age, was it something he naturally let you come into with baseball or, you know, being that he was a baseball player, was it something that he got you into because he was hoping that you would kind of take after him? I mean, he definitely like pushed me towards baseball. I mean, that was his sport, but I also played basketball and, you know, uh, football growing up. Um, but baseball was always my, my sport. And, um, you know, fortunately, like I, I, I just clicked with it. Like I love nothing more than you know, going and playing baseball. And, um, you know what, it's, it, I guess it's probably just because of how I started from a young age and like something just clicked in my brain. I, I haven't looked back since, like I enjoy other sports. I enjoy doing other things, but nothing quite the same as I, I love doing baseball. And, uh, obviously my dad would have been fine if I chose to do another sport or chose to do something else, but I think he's, he's probably pretty, pretty happy that I, I decided to pursue baseball for sure. Yeah, no doubt. With my son, it was crazy because my daughter ended up being an athlete. I always thought I'd push my son, and uh, he's creative like his mom. But, you know, if you follow me on social media, you see he goes with me to every sporting event. Um, he's different, man. He walks around and talks to people. He does interviews with me. Um, he passes out sunflower seeds from our sponsor, Um, does everything but kind of play. And everybody asks me, does he play? And, you know, I bring that up to say, you know, I thought I would, like, push him, but – I'm perfectly okay with him just being my ride or die hanging out at games. And I never thought prior to having him, I would be that way. But, um, you know, like I said, my daughter filled that void and man, you know, I'm blessed to have a kid that wants to watch baseball. Right. I mean, I see some of these parents, I'm at games, like they're dragging their kids there. They look like they're miserable. Like they probably regret bringing them. I don't have to deal with that. So like, you know, I'll take what I got. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. I mean, it's, it, it's one of my, you know, that's a big reason why I play and I do the things I do is, you know, when I see young kids and I see, um, you know, kids that look up to me or, or, or whatever at a game and they're they're really into it. I mean, that just kind of, you know, it, it gives you purpose and it, it just makes you like want to play a little bit harder for for those kids that are sitting up there and, you know, wishing they could do what you're doing or maybe, you know, in, in a couple of years they will be. And so that's pretty, pretty sweet to see when I when I see kids doing that. Yeah, just to use your teammate. I mean, when we we're in Arlington, you know, he got to interview Aiden Jimenez and 
-hmm. he was like what uh what do you want me to ask him i said ask him whatever you want buddy it was just all in fun and you know he he looks up at aiden and just looks at him you know like the world revolves around him and, and that's what we want to see man and and for aiden he talked about how cool that was because you know same thing you're saying right you're out you're out there you know you were that kid once and you're out there putting on the show for him and so yeah it all comes full circle it's great how you know that all happens but for you man speaking of the influences you know was it dad was it another coach was it maybe a professional athlete you know when you were a kid growing up playing ball who was the biggest influence for you um you know definitely my dad I would say um anytime I had a question or anything I'd always go ask him um, and he he pushed me pretty hard when I was younger, which I feel like molded the way way I am. Um, I, I tell a funny story of when when I was younger, I, I was playing up uh, kind of like we talked about earlier with my brother. And I would beg my dad. I was like, please let me pitch. Please let me pitch because uh, I hadn't pitched yet. And he goes, all right. But if you walk somebody, I'm pulling you. And so I go up there first pitch uh, ball and then I walk the guy on four pitches. And my dad yanks me. Um, and I like to tell that story and, you know, my dad looks back on it. He's like, damn, I shouldn't have done that. But you know what? I feel like that, that kind of helps, uh, you know, mold me and, uh, create like a, a fire for the game. And like, you know, my dad's super supportive, but he's also realistic with me and like would, would, uh, would help me and talk through everything with me. And so there's been a lot of times where, you know, we'll have great conversations about the game and great conversations about, you know, what I need to do to get better and everything. And, um, I feel like as, as I've gotten older and everything, he's kind of, molded into more of like a now <laughs> pulling me back and reeling me back of, you know, if I have a bad outing or something, he's always there to like, you know, ground me and be like, Hey man, like, it's okay. You like, you know, go back, come back out next time. And so, I mean, he's, he's kind of my rock when it comes to baseball. And so, you know, he's definitely pushed me and helped me and kind of molded the way that I've, I see the game and uh, play in the game. Yeah. My daughter had a, uh, a very skilled soccer club coach. I um, played tournament and competitive ball and a coach from overseas who, you know, we had a meeting one time and it it really like opened up my eyes about, um, you know, he said, I'm going to talk to your kids about what they do wrong when they leave the the field. I don't want you to talk to them about anything that has to do with soccer. I want you to talk to them about anything else. I'll handle that part. But he's like, you're supposed to be their outlet. They, and he said at this level, and I'm sure it's the same thing for you in baseball, they know what they did wrong. They don't need you to tell them what they did wrong. They need you to help them feel better to forget about what they did wrong because they're going to they're gonna come back and they're trying to fix it. And so it really opened my eyes. And so it got to a point where I stopped trying to worry about and do all that and just, you know, be their father and be there for them. And I think that's what a lot of parents kind of miss somewhere along the way um, because uh, athlete, the caliber of you, Aiden, like he knows you know what to do to fix yourself. Like, I ain't no reason to hammer it down and your coaches are going to work with you. So um, it's one of those things, you know, being a father of an athlete, it's a, it's a learning process. And, you know, hopefully he's instilled ways to when, you know, hopefully you get to do it on down the road, you uh, you're able to handle it in the way that you would like to, but um, yeah, of course, obviously, you know, you get on to high school ball. Where did you go to high school? I went to Sandia High School in in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and the cool part about that is I actually went to high school with one of my my Oregon State teammates now, um, Jacob Kamatz, our one of our other starters. And so um, he's kind of the one of the reasons that I came to Oregon State in the first place. But um, you know, high school ball was awesome. Uh, you know, getting to to train with a lot of high level talent in New Mexico is is one of those things that you know that kind of the the kind of talent that we had on that team doesn't come along a lot in New Mexico. And so you know, it was it was special. And you know, a lot of those guys that I I, I played throughout the years. I'm still really close with, and, you know, I love those guys to death and, you know, high school ball was super fun. Yeah. So, I mean, and I mean, I imagine it's fun, you know, earning all district honors as a junior and senior, picking up all state recognition as a senior, uh, finished prep career as the number two rated prospect in New Mexico by perfect game. Also, man, um, worth noting, you know, academic honor roll all four years. So, you know, getting it done in the classroom and on the field, we always find that to be important. So, you know, when it comes to going to college, you know, um, was there a lot of colleges, you know, you were on the radar, you know, I, I'm trying to picture it because I don't know New Mexico too well, man. And honestly, you're only the second athlete we've had from there. So, you know, I don't know if there's a lot of attention being put on you from there. Um, you know, what's the recruiting process like? Well, I can't speak for everybody. My recruiting process was honestly very uh, unorthodox, I would say. So um, I did have quite a few schools reaching out, um, you know, a couple power fives. and uh, But for the most part, it was mid-majors um, throughout high school, uh, through my junior year, I guess I should say. Um, and I ended up committing to Wichita State University. Um, and then after 
going into my senior year, I tore my UCL. Um, so I had full reconstruction. Um, and at that point, uh, Wichita State decided, you know, it, it wasn't best for them if 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 I attended. Um, and so I didn't have any money to go there. So I decided, all right, I'm going to go to junior college. Um, and so then I went to Pima out of high school, which, you know, was 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 great. Um, but, you know, I, I guess my my recruiting was was pretty unorthodox to, you know, a lot of guys uh, in high school. I know that New Mexico isn't, you know, exactly the 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 most looked at state but the good thing is you know you're right next to texas you're right next to arizona um even colorado and so you've you've got big recognition right nearby so you can really easily get access to you know high level tournaments and i've got a lot of buddies i've got a lot of people that i've been around that you know it, it's not super hard to get recruited out of new mexico like if you're talented especially as a pitcher um you know arms arms is kind of what what new mexico is known for there's been a few high level um, you know, high profile guys. Like I, I, I was just watching the LSU game earlier and uh, Stephen Malam is a kid from New Mexico and he's, he's right. starting for him this year. And so, I mean, there's a lot of high level talent coming out of New Mexico and, you know, guys are doing very well at the, the highest level as well. Yeah, no, the monster's getting it done. Uh, obviously I'm an LSU fan. Um, if I didn't have my normal background wall, you would know that it would be completely <laughs> decked out with the athletic collection posters, but um, yeah, no. Um, so you go to Pima and, you know, we learn from so many guys like, you know, Going to JUCO, man, is so advantageous. I think so many people frown upon it, but it is a um, a springboard. I don't even say a stepping stone. It's not a stepping stone. It's a springboard. So many guys catapult their career by going and doing extremely well. And so, you know, I'm sure you wish things would have worked out at Wichita State, but ultimately they worked out for you at Pima to where you could end up where you are. You know, you go there. Cool. Um, you end up going um six and one, 50 strikeouts and 14 appearances and 12 starts, 46 to uh, – 46 and two thirds innings, you know, talk about your success there. What it's always about what you're able to learn from that experience. What do you feel like you were able to learn the most from that experience? You know, Pima, Pima was great. Um, I have a, I have a great relationship with the head coach there. His name is Ken Hockamy. Um, he used to be the pitching coach at U the university of New Mexico, which is kind of where that connection came from. And, um, you know, getting to go in there, I kind of had a conversation with him and uh, coming off of, of Tommy John surgery. He's like, Hey, just use the fall to get healthy. Like, you know, get ready, get prepped for the spring. And then once the spring came, um, you know, the, it was it was honestly a, a, a weird up and down season, which, you know, I look back on and I, I'm i very thankful for because it taught me a lot, taught me a lot about, you know, what I was in the fall and uh, in the early spring. I was getting a lot of draft hype. I was getting a lot of talking to scouts because of how hard I was throwing. But my command just wasn't there enough to really um, utilize the the stuff that I had. Uh, and so, you know, there's really good outings, there's really bad outings, and it was just kind of all in between. Um, and I finally found my rhythm. I found my groove towards the end of the year, which was just perfect because, you know, it was, it was kind of just like everything clicked and everything started feeling good. Um, and I can look back on that time as like, you know what, there was, there was a ton of up and downs. There's a ton of stuff that didn't go my way, but there's also a ton of stuff that I worked through and got through and, um, you know, made me who, who I am as a pitcher today, which, you know, I'm super thankful for. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, obviously you're going to end up on the move again, man. You end up at Arizona. So how is it that, you know, I'm sure you, with the success you had at JUCO, you had numerous colleges reach out again. So what made Arizona to be the destination? You know, um, I guess comfortability was was definitely good. Uh, obviously, Pima is in Tucson. You know, U of A is also in Tucson. And so just the the known environment. Obviously, I, I love Arizona. Um, you know, pitching in the, in the, in the warmth is, is never a bad thing. And so, you know, getting to get that opportunity was great. And um, you know what, obviously I, I'm not there now, but I have nothing bad to say, but, you know, U of A, like it's, it's a great program. I really respect the hell out of, you know, what the coaches are doing. I, I have a ton of friends that are still there and um, you know what, they, they have a hell of a program and it's, it was a great experience for me for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you go there, you have success, you post a five and three record. Um, I'm sure the ERA you'd like to bring down, but nonetheless, 6.33 ERA, man, 77 strikeouts. Um, you know, so some set, so, so, um, some success, but you know, I don't want to spend too much time on Arizona because you know, got a lot of people really want to know about Oregon State. So let's yeah. let's make it simple, man. So you have success there. Um, how does Oregon State come in the question? Because you know, Oregon State, um, when it comes to college baseball, is you know elite, and um, you know, and they're not just somebody that's going to come calling. So how did that conversation uh, come about? So, um, you know, obviously after the, after the year at Arizona, there just there was just some things that didn't quite qu click with me um, in, in what I wanted from my my baseball career at Arizona. And like I said, you know, nothing bad to say about them. They were, they were great to me. And 
Um, I have no ill will towards them or anything at all. Um, you know what? But um, then, you know, talking with one of my best friends, like I mentioned, Jacob, um, Jacob Kamatz, who's, who's, you know, been one of my best friends since high school. Um, he's been at Oregon State for a couple of years. You know, they, the culture that they just have here is, is, is unrivaled from anything that I've seen in college baseball. You know, the, the way that they've built what they have um, in a place like Corvallis is just special. Um, and getting to see that and get to be a part of that now, like experiencing that firsthand. I mean, it's everything that it, it was, was promised to me. It's everything that, you know, people talk about and it's, it's a special place for sure, especially when it comes to college baseball. Yeah. And so when you, when we're getting prepared for this season, we were looking at, did a lot of talks, um, you know, we obviously had Aiden Jimenez, like I, I had talked about and, you know, man, the, the schedule lined up, right. The talent lined up, y- y'all were, y'all were built with a lot. You obviously, everybody talks about Travis Bazana, but you just looked at the pitching staff, um, obviously took a hit with Aiden May or mm-hmm. Aiden May, Aiden Jimenez, but, um, you know, actually taking a hit now, cause you know, you're a little injured, but we'll talk about that in a second, but, uh, <laughs> yes, you know, sir. like just, an Oregon State team that just seemed really well constructed. And then you looked at the schedule and anybody who was good in the Pac-12 was coming to y'all and we're like, this team is lined up to where they're set up well to end up being a, a you know, a host in the postseason and a team that can make Omaha. Obviously, yeah. you've got to take it one weekend at a time. You can't look that far ahead, but it was looking good coming into the season. So I get to see y'all, um, you know, with my own eyes in Arlington, Unfortunately, you had to uh, go up against, you know, one Hagen Smith, who's a guest of the show, who just decided um, he was going to have the game of his life against your team. You know, let's talk about that first, because I know pitchers and I know that y'all will tip the captain. Man, what was that like? You know, you were having a great game yourself, but it was almost like no one knew that because of what he was doing on the other side. You know, I wasn't really thinking about that. Like, uh, it got to a certain point where I was just telling myself in the dugout, I was like, good, I don't want I don't want my guys to score. I want to go out there and I want to I want to just shut them out like. I don't want them to do this. And so, um, you know, it was, it was awesome to get to, to be in that environment and just to get that, the chance to pitch in, in something like that. Um, and you know what, Hagen had a hell of an outing. I mean, you know, it, he's, he's a hell of a pitcher and it was just, you know, it, it, it's tough to put up runs and it's tough to put up stuff um, on a guy like that when he's having, you know, a, a, a career night, like when he's already got loud stuff and, you know, utilizes it well. And then all of a sudden he's, you know, having one of his best starts he's ever had. It's like stuff to produce a lot of stuff. But I think we showed enough of like when he came out of the game, like we we had a ton of fight, like we brought, you know, we came right back in that game. Like our hitters never let up. Um, you know, it's 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 easy after you strike out um, and, you know, you're not having a great game. You're getting, you know, kind of dominated in the box. It's easy to just lie down and die. But, you know, something that uh, our head coach and like everybody, you know, that that's in this program preaches is like never give up, like keep fighting, keep going through it. And I feel like, you know, that showed like how much we we fight and like what we can do as an offense, what we can do as a team and, you know, even through some adversity like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I hope that, you know, the coaching staff told y'all that that's a good idea of a kind of Omaha field. There's not as many fans there. Um, you know, it's not as packed out, but, um, you know, you saw how many Arkansas fans were there. You saw how big the stadium was. You're not at home. Um, and there's multiple teams there, not just the two of y'all. That's a, it's a, you know, kind of a mini Omaha field, and it kind of gives you preparation, especially when that's, you know, where y'all want to end up. So it's good for you to pitch on the stage. It was good for your team to play yes, on the sir. stage, um, like you said. And, and you saw what you wanted to see. Then y'all obviously got the other two wins. So you come out on the weekend, you know, um, two out of three, which is what you always go into in any series, right? You want to come out with those. Um, yes, sir. So, but you did end up getting injured, you know, talk to us about the injury, you know, what happened and then where are you at right now as far as like coming back? So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, obviously like that early into the season, like a a high adrenaline uh, day like that. And um, you're going to get some fatigue and everything. Like I I'm, I'm all right, luckily, and nothing ended up happening. Um, And I feel great. You know, I'm getting built back up right now. I should be able to start uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. I'm just making sure my workload's back properly and everything. My arm feels great. I'm I'm in you know great shape and um, you know what? Obviously, it's unfortunate, but those are things that you deal with. And you know what? I'm I'm blessed because you know what? I, I I'm only gonna ha- end up missing or having to miss one pack series. Um, you know what? We're we're rolling right now, and so I have no complaints. And obviously, gives guys uh, you know other chances to to step up and maybe get some big roles. Um, and it'll help us down the stretch. Obviously, you never want to get hurt. Um, you never want anything to happen, but you know what? I'm I'm trying to take everything I can as a blessing and 
um, you know what the team's winning. So at the end of the day, that's that's all that matters. Yeah, and I, I have to commend your coaching staff. So many coaching staffs make the mistake of trying to rush guys back, and then the injury ends up being so much uh, more significant. So the fact that they gave you the proper rest, um, going through the proper channels, and like you said, it's worked out your team's winning. But even I would say even if y'all weren't maybe winning at the clip you were, it's still about the long term, right? And so they yeah. have to protect their guys, uh, especially if you're their Friday night guy. So I feel like your coaching staff's handled it well. And like you said, your team has picked up the slack, no problem. Um, and that's where I was going to go from this, you know, depending on what rankings, you know, anywhere between two and six. Right. But it doesn't matter. Basically, at the end of the day, Oregon State's a top five team is basically what it means. And yes. they're what I said, you know, y'all are a team that everybody knows has the talent. The schedule lines up. Um, so I want to ask you, how does the how does the team feel? I'm sure they're thinking the same mentality. I said, you know, not getting ahead of themselves, thinking, you know, one series at a time as they go into the Pac-12. But um, they have to be feeling pretty good about yourself this far into the season. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's been awesome. Um, obviously, you know what, talking to guys and everything, they wanted to host last year, too. But, you know, the RPI just kind of screwed them out of it because it's some weaker series. They had the talent. They had the the high quality roster and everything. But, uh, you know, the, the RPI comes down to it. And so being able to, like, have those big time matchups early in the year and really produce and show, like, what we can do as a team was big. Um, and, you know, to, to be 15 and one at this point to the year is just, you know, amazing. It's tremendous. And so, um, you know, the, the team's feeling great. We're in high spirits. We feel great going into pack play. Um, and the, the biggest thing we're, we're, we're saying now is like, yeah, obviously the rankings don't mean much, but it's like, we're a hell of a team and you got to know that. And so it's like, go in and be aggressive, go towards like, go at teams. Like they're the ones that like, we don't need to play back to them. They need to play back to us. And so, you know, just, just keeping our foot on the gas and just, making sure that we don't falter like uh, Travis was talking about today um, that, you know, he, he wants us to be the, the, the best Oregon state team of all time. And that's just, you know, that's just incredible because you know, it, it, it means that every game we're going to try to win every game. We're going to, you know, keep on the throttle. And like, obviously the only game that matters is the last one of the year, like us raising a trophy, but um, you know what, uh, just taking it one game at a time and making sure that we, we stay aggressive and we stay on them is, is the most important thing that we're, we're focusing on right now. Yeah, absolutely. So I brought up that schedule, you know. Um, is there any series that you look forward more to any of them? I mean, is it the obvious? I know you're new to the Oregon State culture. Is it, you know, is it Oregon coming? Um, is it someone else? Or is it, you know what, they're all coming to you? Like, just, I'm excited about all of them. Bring it. You know what, I, 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 I'm I, kind of a a guy where it's like, I don't really care who's in the other dugout. Like, I'm, I'm going to pitch the same way. I'm going to go at guys the same way. But you know what, if if there is one series that's going to get me a little bit more riled up, it's for sure that Oregon series. Um, obviously, I'm new to Oregon State, but, you know, last year Oregon beat us in Arizona in, in the Pac-12 championship. And, um, you know, they they were, you know, a, a solid team last year, but, you know, they it, it, it sucks to lose to them like that. And uh, it just kind of rubs you the wrong way. And so, you know, now being in Oregon State, having that rivalry and being able to to be a part of that is 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 going to be a, a really cool thing, especially because it's in Fort Dallas this year. Mm. And, so, you know, it's well, man, it, and it's the this is the last year of Pac-12, man. This is a, yeah. it's the year that everybody in that conference needs to, you know, enjoy, man. Um, You know, hopefully for you, I'm sure the the goal is to obviously get drafted and not be back. But regardless of the fact, you know. Um, it's not going to be there anymore. And so a lot of these matchups that, that you're going to get to be a part of won't be there. And so um, it's not just you, everybody in the Pac-12, you know, everything's going to change, man. And I'm one of those that I'm not the biggest fan of change. I don't like the idea of the Pac-12 not being what it was. It's it's always been there since I was a kid. But, yeah, man, yeah, taking those those rivalries and all those matchups uh, and enjoying them for what they're worth because they won't be there anymore. Yeah, you know, it, it, the Pac-12 is like the, it's the most historic conference in the country. Um, and, you know, to be able to to see that kind of go away is it sucks. But, you know, what, making the last of it and we were kind of talking about that uh, um, because baseball is kind of the last sport that we're the last for every team. And you um, want to be the last champion of that conference, I imagine. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's been on the mind. And, um, you know, what we talked about it with the coaching staff and the players and everything is um, I mean, the Pac-12 tournament's only been around for a couple of years. But, you know, what, the Oregon State hasn't been able to win a Pac-12 conference or a Pac-12 tournament championship. And so that's that's big on our minds is winning the tournament um, and then obviously getting ready for, for playoffs, but, you know, just, just doing everything right. And like, you know, there, there is a little extra, you know, chip on the shoulder, I guess, because of, of everything happening with conference realignment, and, you know, we're just, we're just playing to win and it, it gives us a little boost, I guess, if anything else. Yeah, absolutely. So 
you know, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna play a game with you, give everybody a lighthearted side. Uh, let's call it this or that, man. You down to play? Sure, let's do it. All right, so it's brought to you by Chinook Cedary. Like I said, I'm on the road. I usually have bags of seeds everywhere with me. Um, your boy Jimenez, I set him up as an ambassador. Has he shared seeds with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, he's he's good about that. And you know what? I, I love the seeds. I think hatch chili is probably my favorite. Boom. Uh, that's but... where my next question was going to go. And uh, that that is a popular one. It's, it seems to always be hatch chili, uh, Parmesan, or the smokehouse barbecue, barbecue for most people. I'm yeah. actually, um, I'm, as my host likes to say, um, no fun. I am an original. Um, <laughs> I keep it very simple. I am who I am. I'm, I'm basic, so. You can't go wrong with original seeds. That it's it's the go-to. You just can't. You just can't. But uh, yeah, I give you two options. You choose one or the other. You just can't say sure. both. Can't say neither. So first question, we keep it easy. Chicken or beef tacos? I'm beef all the way. Are you beef over steak though? No, I'm steak. I mean, <laughs> especially like in New Mexico street tacos. Ooh, some some nice like like you can't go wrong with steak street tacos. Absolutely. You know, man, uh, when I was there, as a matter of fact, you'll probably know, man, there were some um there were some trucks that had some tacos that were just, man, don't don't ever underestimate the food trucks. Oh no. No, you can't. All right. This next one's weird, but we have fun with it. You a liquid soap person or a bar soap person? I guess I'd say I kind of go back and forth, but liquid soap more, I suppose. Um, what if I told you liquid soap only clean fifty percent of your body? I guess I'm a bar soap guy. Then I got to switch back. <laughs> uh, no, I just make that up every time. And every time y'all all fall for it. No, I don't know that. I just use bar soap. So I like to say that, but no, it don't. Uh, I don't know how much okay. percentage cleans, but I, it, I'll say this bar soap cleans better. Liquid soap smells better. Oh yeah. You know, I, I'm a big guy of like whatever I have access to. I'm not super picky. So if I got bar soap, I'm using bar soap. If I got liquid soap, I'm using liquid soap. So, you know what I, I guess if I had my pick, probably liquid soap, but who knows? All right. So the next one, man, I am a fan of black uniforms for any combination uniform kit that has them. You know, LSU doesn't have them. Very traditionalist. A lot of programs don't. But, uh, you know, obviously Oregon State does. Uh, would you rather the black uniforms or the traditionals? You like you like your alternates or no? I mean, we just got new creams this year and they are just I mean, they're just such good looking jerseys. So I might have to go with the alternates. But um, you know what? I, I will say blacks are great, but I don't like when you do the black pants with the black tops. I'm a I'm a firm believer in no black pants. I think if there's one if there's one team that does it good, Campbell has some pretty nice black pants. Campbell did it. Mississippi State did it when they had their Sunday blacks, but they took them away because the tra traditionalists in Mississippi State just believed that your uniforms had to be maroon. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That's probably a good call. I didn't really like the Mississippi. I black. do like the Tennessee <laughs> dark mode ones, but to your point, they got white pants. They're not black yeah. all the way. So, see, I, I like those. You know what? I Tennessee has some pretty clean uniforms, so they they're doing it right with the no black pants. I'm convinced though, and this doesn't have black in it at all. But you know, they won it this past year in the uh, uniform battle, and I feel like every time somebody wins the college baseball hub uniform thing, they should be dropped off because. What happens is somebody will win it, then they can't participate the next year, but then they'll come back and win it. And so North Carolina won it again. They shouldn't be allowed to win it again because, yes, they're blue. You know, the Carolina blue is just where it's at. The whole kit and combo, like Vance Honeycutt even talked about it. Like, I mean, that was his favorite part of like the first day he put on his uniform in North Carolina. It wasn't even the fact that it said North Carolina on it. He just said that blue was like different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough to beat the Carolina blues. You know what? I obviously I'm biased, but I feel like Oregon State's underrepresented in that uniform challenge. Like we've got some pretty sweet unis, and he's like we don't get the recognition. Well, that's what I say because I mean, well, you're not going to win because the same like four rotation teams win it. Like you don't have a of chance. Of course, yeah, no, that's that's definitely for, that's for sure. All right, would you rather go to a costume party or a pool party? Probably a pool party. You know what I. I, I like swimming, I would say. I'm not a big costume guy. I'm not a huge, like, Halloween dress-up guy. I'm so sure you like love the pool, pool in New Mexico. It's hot as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey, but like I said, in the winter, it gets cold. So when that summer rolls around, you're you're ready for it. That heat, will it's nice. Absolutely. All right. It's the tough one, man. Would you rather be lost in a jungle at night or trapped in a haunted house? Lost in a jungle. I mean, I feel like. I don't know. You can, Dude, you the can snakes, the tigers, all that stuff. 
it's real, man. The haunted house. I can't exactly say if the ghosts are real or not, but I know that stuff in the jungle at night is real. Okay, so we're saying for sh- like the haunted house isn't haunted for sure. It's just I can't, I can't. I'm not there, man. I can't verify. I just know. Look, I just know that I'm for sure dead in a jungle at night. I don't know what's gonna happen in the haunted house. I'm a Tigers, an LSU Tigers fan. I've seen Mike the Tiger, and I imagine what he'd be like outside of his cage. And I don't <laughs> want the smoke. All right, that's true. I might have to flip my answer then, but you know what? I'm still I'm still rocking in the jungle. We'll, we'll so, try to. Survive. But we always say that's the question when there's no good answer. It used to be, would you rather, um, you know, be trapped with a grizzly bear or trapped with a tiger? And obviously, you're going to lose both battles. So this <laughs> year we kind of flipped it, but it's one yeah. of those where there's no no good answer because the question after it that I'm going to ask is, you know, it's two good answers. You just decide which one. So this one is, would you rather have a private yacht or a private jet? Private jet. I mean, I feel like if private yacht kind of sits in the, in the same place, private jet, you can take it. depends anything. on if you're a boat. It all comes like I'm a private yacht guy, but I was in the Navy. We have a lot of people who are fishermen or they like being on the water. They see yacht. If they're not you know, water people, they want the jet. They want to get to and from, you know, real quick everywhere. See, I, I, I love fishing, but I'm a, I'm a river guy. Like, I don't like fishing in the oceans. You know, and I'm, I'm a mountains over beaches guy all day. So I'll take I'll take my private jet and I'll go fly. If you got mountains. your private jet and you had it right now. Where are you flying to right now? Just because you can, you can go there right now. Fight a private jet. Uh, you know what? I've always like I played summer ball in East Tennessee a couple years ago, and I I fell in love with it. I mean, like the Appalachian Mountains over in Tennessee. Like I'd go spend. So you could have like went to Europe, and you chose East Tennessee. That's wild, Aiden. <laughs> I love. I don't know what it is. Everyone always tells me the same thing. They're like, "Why there?" But I, I mean, the Appalachian no, I Mountains. love East Tennessee. Don't get don't get a twist. I've been there a hundred times. I'm from West Tennessee. But like I was thinking, like you know, you might say some destination in Europe or a tropical island. You hit me with, you hit me with East Tennessee. You just gonna go off to Chattanooga when you go anywhere. <laughs> That's wild. Oh yeah, hey, hey, you can't beat that. You know, go go fishing for for a week or whatever. Come back and hey, you All can't right. beat that. Hey, teach your own, man. I'm not here. I'm not here to judge. Uh, <laughs> last one though, I judge you on this question. Judge everybody. It's the money question. Yes, Would sir. you rather be the number one overall pick, which is basically about uh, ten million dollars guaranteed, or win a national championship? I'm winning a national championship all day. Like I've said it, you know what? There, the money can come, and you know what? I believe in my talent, so I'll, I'll make it to the big leagues eventually, and and make some pretty pretty damn good money there. So, but you you, you can't pr- replace the feeling of a national championship. So, you know, yeah. That, I mean, I used to I used to try to argue and. and and fight with people but the problem was so we had skeins on before the season last year we had skeins on after um we asked him the question again he said he would give up his number one pick after he had acquired it and his 10 million dollars and said that he wouldn't trade that national championship for anything so if a guy who has both tells me he's still taking national championship who am i to argue and say you know what it's because he's telling me right now that those memories with his boys throughout that season and 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 winning that title is worth more hey he would know i wouldn't course and you know what that that's kind of what's special about our our, our coaching staff and um, some of the people that we brought in this year is like our head coach Mitch Canham obviously won a national championship our assistant um, Joey Wong won a national championship like all the guys uh, Zach Taylor won a national championship in 2018 so like all these guys you know they've they've done it they've won um, and they've been around and so like getting to hear from them about their experiences and um, like you know them winning the national championship and like them feeding into us and like trying to help us along like to replace that I feel like is just you you can't do it and so um, definitely winning the championship is above pretty much all else right now in, in terms of what I'm looking forward to yeah no doubt well man sounds like you got your head on straight sounds like you know as far as this season you know what it is you got to do and you're almost healthy and back so man we wish you nothing but the best of luck hope that everything works out um you know, I'm in Omaha every year, and I got y'all picked to be there and hope to to see y'all there. But before we cut you loose, is there anything you want to plug or promote, whether it's um, NIL, nonprofit, team-oriented? You got anything you want to throw out there? Um, I don't think so. I mean, just, you know, just tell everybody to, to watch the Beavers this year. I mean, we, we got a special group, and so if anybody can tune in and watch us play, like, it's, it's going to be a special – uh, team to watch and so you know what I appreciate you having me on here and it was it was good to talk to you and you know what good luck to to LSU this year for for you for <laughs> for your fandom we but, don't uh, need luck man what are you talking no, I'm messing with you yeah, but <laughs> the, hopefully, uh, 
So okay, if, well. if y'all want if y'all want to see what Aiden's got going on, you go over to Instagram ATM underscore 24 underscore. But as he was talking about Beaver Baseball, it's very simple. Type it in on Instagram. They got the hype videos, they got the scores, they got everything you need to follow Beaver Baseball. Um, and they are worth your follow because this team is the real deal. Um, they are gonna be there when it's all said and done. But um, Aiden, we thank you for joining us. And man, uh, like I said, you need anything along the way, reach out and uh, give us a shout. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Aiden May, everybody. If you like hearing his story or you just like hearing Avis Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. Retweet us on Twitter. Listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, ratings, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all that good stuff is welcome. We will see everyone back tomorrow night. I will be back with Daniel. We'll be talking NC State baseball with pitcher Chance Mako. But in the meantime, remember, strong body, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.